and welcome back to the sea. What do we have on the show today? We've got a package from Mr. Matt in Burrito Springs, California. Something like that. It's a big box, so you know damn well it's 2000. Hope there's a note. It just showed up. So, what's up, Amiga? I peeled off my address label for security. Good packing at the phone here, and we have a little note. We have a little something. We have a package of chips. Very well packaged. Dude, oh, it's heavy. Left the metal on the bottom. Oh man, why is this so heavy? Not there with the old hooch. All right. Inside the note says U507, U503 question mark. All right, let's take a peek at this duct tape special here. Now, when you're talking U503, that's RAM chips. Over here, U507, that's, whoops, sorry, that's these two guys right here on the outer banks. What is this? I don't have a note in this box. Let's see what we got here. What is this? This is, it's two memory chips. Okay, so, plastic container. Thank you for that. I'll return it with it so you can have that back. U507, U503. Kickstart 204 ROM, 8372A, 1 Meg Agnes, Jumper to NTSC. 500 jumper is on. This looks familiar. Bent uh, power rails from pulling it out and it slides out crooked. How's the fingerprints look? This chick is toast! Eh. This needs to come out. Which means, let's get her out of the metal. Give her the old tertiary bend and pull. See what's going on underneath. It's been taken apart before. I don't know what these lines are. It's like a steamroller tire on it. Hey Chris, I sent a 2000 motherboard you were trying to help me with. It's missing half a meg of chip. I'm getting errors on U507 and U503. Off to you it goes. Thank you so much for helping. I've subscribed to Patreon as well. Keep up the good work. Love your channel. Cheers, Matt. Okay. We know it's got a RAM problem from the get-go, but does it have a RAM problem? We're going to bust out a power supply of substantial power. It's an ATX power supply. And, oh, already got the three 2000 stuff on it because I was doing another 2000 repair, apparently, when I used this last. Yep. Let's make sure we put our stuff in the right order because that would be bad if you plugged it in wrong. J300 has to go in the pins 1 and 2, or 2 and 3 here. That's to the right. That's for the external tick signal coming from that, not this, because this doesn't have a tick. So it grabs it from what's called V-Sync, which is the vertical sync of your monitor. I'm 60 hertz, therefore NTSC. 60 hertz. Crystal is 2863636. America, where Jesus lives, in the Amiga kit RGB DB232 HD sub 15 mofo. We'll see if that works. Here we go. Hit it. Stuck in high. Stuck in high, but is, is it going to do anything? It's got, well, shoot. Okay, so much for that. Stuck in high and then it said, no thank you. Well, it worked for almost once. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Saw the white screen of, hey, is this going to be easy? No, it's not. Here's a diagram. Jannard IC extractor. Give her a little... Hello, pulls your chip right out. Uh, it's got the old 1 to 31 wire for the Rev 5 boards. Bit of deoxit D5. It's a cleaner lubricant. It has a throttle on it because it comes out like carburetor cleaner, 4,000 miles per hour. But if you turn on low, you can give it to a little spit, which is still way too much. Great. Just gonna freshen up her breath a little bit there. That's not going in. Why is that? Because the pin is smashed. Mouse and mouse and mouse. Diagram. Hoi! We get diagram. All right, that's good. We have UDS. Whoa! We have UDS LDS, which is good. Uh, so that means it'll at least. Um, 
I have no mouse button. I have no mouse button. Okay, stuck mouse. Let's use the keyboard. Let's test those CIAs first. I mean, nothing on the diagram screen. There's nothing on VGA at all. And that just did its own thing. I didn't even see if this, the CIAs tested positive. Did they? I don't know. I'm unplugging the mouse here. So we don't get any corresponding mess. Okay, 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 okay. It says NTSC, look at this. NTSC will give false readings. Uh, this sounds like an LS uh, 157N, which is a little chip down here. It's just like randomly clicking itself. Main menu, let's see what the memory says. 512K and nothing. So we're gonna do a RAM test here. Bad block start, so can't get past it. We're gonna let it roll. 8,192 errors, 128k chips that are four of them equals 512 times two banks. So we should have, let's see, uh, 1024 minus 128 minus 128, 768k of RAM that's good if there's two chips bad. If not, it could be more. So this should be 256k bad, two bad chips, 256k, so that's, that's going to be it. Now, I'm going to turn this off. Beep. How would you test this? Well, the included chips that I was granted here, and you will stack one. We're just going to do one. Turn it back on. Get our diagram screen. I don't have a mouse hooked up. Oh, now we get video. So there we go right there. Can I click in time? Now I have mouse button. Lost video again, though. Windows kicked in. I have mouse. All right, let's do the memory again. Now, I'm stacking a chip. Your results will be weird. It might work fine. It might not. If the chip is half dead, it's going to give you weirdness. All the chips are dead. You're just borrowing its soldered lines to stack the other chip right here. You can see it. I'll pull it out. We'll put it in a socket. This is tedious work, but this isn't too hard. I don't know if it's the first bank or the second bank, so I put it on the bottom. There we go. So that's one chip stacked. Working at 512, we lost it. So now we're at usable 575. We might get lucky and it's only one chip. We're already at 735 with no errors. But there's 128K sticking around somewhere else. Bingo. Illegal instruction detected. Why? Because I'm stacking a chip. So now we got to make a chip. You can see right here. And we had an illegal instruction because I am stacking. And stacking looks like this i physically stuck the good rem chip over the bad rem chip now how are you going to fix that well first we're going to turn it off and then that screen will just be what it is we'll take this memory chip off and i'll disconnect all this stuff earlier today the ankle bracelet shot off the table and hit me in the cheek <laughs> so i have this injury mark where I've been smacked in the cheek by a clamp. And we're just going to add some solder to the points. Now a lot of times, these get their little legs bent over. That's the removal. Chip is out. Everything came out clean. So we're going to power the back bit. This is the updated firmwares of 2024, what is this version? 4.20. Dip 20. Here we go. Test. Failed all tests. <laughs> we knew that chip was bad. Okay. One socket done. This is one of the better specimens that have ever been on this channel. Look at that. And no board flex. Look at that. She's a regular old flat pizza. Now, the weight of my arm is probably bending it, but it sits on the table flush. There's no, there's no board flex. Look at this fine specimen of particle board. It should be showing me display. Is my monitor borked out again? I don't know. We have a mega chip RAM though. So that's fine. I'm gonna run the memory test again. How do these RAMs go bad, Chris? How they've been sitting here for 30 years. How does it what happens? Static electricity, uh, plugging something in while it's running. 
a mouse. I mean, anything can happen. The mouse usually pops the uh, the Pico fuse, this little green jobbers F1 through F5. And uh, this one's been doubled up, so she's a double. She's, she's an 8 amper. So that's been doubled up on F1, so apparently that broke before and they just laid one on top. Or the LS157 U202 will be your mouse culprit. And that's your and that's your lesson for today. And that's one to grow on. And after the RAM test is done, we're gonna pop out diagram, put the owner's 204 back in the slot and see how it is. I did run a little bit of deoxid in the slot because it did have some ashiness of crust. The ROM itself looks good, nice and shiny. No crusties, no oxidation or crap. It does have a solder ball here and on 31 because if you don't know this, here's another lesson for the day. When Kickstart 204 came out, it wouldn't work in certain revision 5 or 4. Let me go to 2000s and some 500s. So Commodore put a wire from pin 1 to 31 across here so you could work on the rev 5s and the 4. So if you didn't need it, you would cut the wire or debraid it or wiggle it off and you would have your normal kickstart. But for those units that did, they now sell ROM adapters, but I've always told you, just solder a wire from pin 1 to 31, and then you'll be good. All right, so we have data dump. We have illegal instruction detected. We're running over something. Let's see here. I might have to do that other chip. Low high, nothing. <laughs> Broke a leg on the ROM, sorry. I'll replace it. Here you go. There we go. All right, so let me get test kits loaded. This machine works again. Switch to 50 hertz. Can I handle that, or is it gonna bork out? Crap. Escape, switch to 60 hertz. All right, so it just hates anything close to 50 hertz. Hates it. One mega chip RAM, let's test. One mega chip. Let's test the region. See how we go. ATK is a little bit more nice than diagram because at least you have a working Amiga at that point. You're booted. You're kickstart. You're getting your screen. This monitor is not going to display the kickstart screen. I can hook it up to a 1084 and it'll display perfectly. Something about certain revision A2000s just freaks out. It doesn't display on my modern stuff. We've already passed. I'll let it go to four. Anything after three is good because it's random bits. Four. Okay, let's escape out. Let's test CIAs on this one a little better. F7. Keyboard's working. F1. 59.8. Round up. 60. Close enough, but CIAs are okay. 1978. Clock works. 37.175. So the ROM I broke with a bad pin. Hey, ironically, it was the pin that had the solder on it. Whoops. Isn't that funny? I could put a new one on, but nobody likes that kickstart anymore. Pull the disc out. System reset bus. There we go. And right, we have the tools. We have the talent. It's Miller time. 292 in this case. Are you a god? These big anti-static bags come to us from Mr. Ed in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania. Sent me a bunch of these a long while back. This is my last one. So I couldn't use that duct tape special. So he sent me these 18 inch motherboard bags and they literally just fit the Amiga 2000s. Just fit them. So Mr. Ed, thank you for those bags so long ago. And uh, now another Amiga has been saved. 292 on the old Richter scale. And that's it for this episode. So by the time it comes out, Mr. Matt in Burrito Springs, CA, should be enjoying this immensely. That's all I got for now. Thanks for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. And I hope you learned something. Yo, it's Big Snoop D.O. Double Gizzle. Just a friendly reminder. Subscribe to this boy right here. Help save them Amigas. Join the Patreon and help this man keep on saving these machines.
you know from funny, you bastard?